In the last tutorial, I went through how we can create a brand new DQMH module and send it request messages. For example, I've created a brand new module here called Money. And if I run the tester, I can start the module, I can show the front panel, hide it, show it again. And these are just sending request messages from the tester to the Money module. However, I now want to send a message back when I click on a new amount. So if the user selects £20, I want to send a message from this module back to the tester. We're going to be doing that by using a broadcast message. To create one of these broadcast messages, we need to stop the module and stop the tester. Either we can go to any tools menu in the Lavio environment, go to tools, Delacor, DQMH, event, create new DQMH event. In here, we're going to specify the DQMH module money and instead of request like we looked at in the last tutorial we'll go to broadcast and give the broadcast event a name so let's call it balance updated and we'll give it a description as well in the events arguments window i'm going to specify a data type to be sent with the broadcast message now this data type could be anything you want, however I'm going to stick with a simple numeric because I just want to send some, send a numeric amount. Let's call it balance. And in brackets we'll put units, which is pence. If I will click OK. Now this is going to do some scripting in the background. So it scripted part of our tester as well. And a good habit to get into is to complete the functionality of your tester before you complete the functionality of your source code. The reason for that is because as soon as your tester starts working as expected, you know you've completed all of the functionality in your source code. And that prevents things like feature creep. So to do that, right click on the event case that's being presented to you. Go to edit events handled by this case. Event balance updated, user event. Now that I've done that, I can delete this blue note. Now, if you remember the data type I specified with this event was a numeric and I called it balance pence. So I can now get this data and create a simple numeric. And I'll slide down the rest of the left hand node and I'll save this. If I go to my modules block diagram, notice how this here has been scripted for us and it says code needed drop this vi wherever you need to broadcast the balance updated message delete when done so let's drag the money updated vi into the money inserted case where we're updating the balance then we'll wire up the updated balance and save there are two things i want to point out here the first is the location of this new balance updated vi in your project so if you go to the private folder called broadcasts within your module, you will find a balance updated VI and you can drag that in whenever you need to send the message. And note that it's private, that's because only this module will be able to send messages out because messages are going from the module itself to the outside world. The second, notice how I have a coercion dot here. So I'm getting that because I forgot to specify the representation of my numeric input. So I need to go back and change this representation to remove that coercion dot. That representation is actually stored within a type definition inside the public API, arguments and broadcast. See here, then balance updated argument cluster. And this control was scripted for you. I'm now just going to right click representation and change it to be an I32. I will save that. I'll also change the front panel control of this VI to be an I32. Save. And notice how that coercion dot goes away. Okay, now let's test out this module to see if it works. Let's open up the test money API VI and run it. We'll start the module. We'll show the module front panel and we'll click on one of these buttons. Let's say five pounds. And you can see that the balance in pence has been updated to 500, which is what we expect. If we click on one pence, it goes up by one, two goes up to 503. We could even add 50 pounds into this vending machine if we want. 
In the next tutorial I'm going to be going through exactly how this works and a bit more of the theory into how the DQMH module operates. But until then, happy lab viewing.